Hair Debate podcast. The Hair Debate is a community where hair lovers and professionals come to discuss all things hair. Love, we debunk and debate these conversations. I'm your host, Morello Kane. I'm a trichologist, author, speaker. Love, I just love hair care. It's my passion. Been in this game for over 20 years. And I have this, you know what? She represents all things beautiful, kinky, okay? And I have with me Elise. She just needs one name, okay? <laughs> Elise with Cut It Kinky, Love Beautiful. How are you? I am great today. Thank you for having me here. No, absolutely. So now world, okay? And I mean, okay, a name, Cut It Kinky, and then look at the, how perfect that Bob, Bob, I'm just saying, okay, Okay, we all, okay, it's not at liberty to rock it like that. But, but love, please introduce to our community. They may not know you because, mm -hmm. love, you out there. You all over, all over the place. Okay, so please introduce your brand to our community, love. All right. Well, my name is Elise. I am the CEO of Cut It Kinky. I have been a licensed stylist for the last 18 years. Oh, wow. And I'm like, I really can say 18 years. <laughs> But I've been specializing in tight, curly, and natural hair for the last 14. Yes. I am a diva inspired stylist. Okay. And when I realized that I wanted to take what I knew about hair cutting okay. and styling yes. and bring it to ease for black women who are wearing their hair in its natural state, yes. uh, that's when I really started working with tight curls in the salon and realizing that stylists needed the same education. Uh, started cut, cut it kinky about seven years ago with my okay. former business partner, who was actually the CEO of wow. Black Girl Curls. So we were a dual company oh, for wow. a while, um, both consumer and professional education, and we are now following our dreams in our respective industries. She's great with the consumers. Okay. I am great with the professionals, and just having an amazing time right now. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay, so now love. So when it comes to kinky hair. Okay. When it comes to cutting period, you know, um, I have a client and, um, it, well actually, okay. Because you guys know who you are <laughs> several. All right. That, that is true. Wait. Okay. Because you know, we would give a name to anything. So right now it's this, what, what is it called? Like, um, trauma trimming or trimming trauma. Okay. And so with that, I have a client. And so, you know, she comes in and I'm looking at, you know, her daughter's hair and, and I want to say this was, say, like 10 years ago when, you know, it was just like, oh, we must have it straight to, to trim the hair. And so, you know, I'm getting to this part, and I'm saying that when the hair is straight, it lets you know. Uh, it will let you know. And I'm looking at these ends, and I'm like, no, you know. So the mom comes in, you know, and getting the mom's, um, getting her consent. You know, I'm just like, okay, I'm looking at her ends. I want to show you, you know. And so let me show you the ends, and right here, Okay, this, we can straight see through, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> we need to go ahead and just cut this because it's damaged. And, you know, and the mom was like, when I tell you that she was so offended, Ooh. okay, so offended. And so she was just like, you know, don't use that word, you know, no, don't say those things. I don't speak like that around my daughter. And I was, you know, so now... And her thing was, you know, just no, 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 just very little bit. And I'm just like, you know, so now as I'm, you know, on social media, because back then it was not, you know, we were just starting this whole digital thing, mm -hmm. you know, but so now, yeah. oh, they, now, now they, the thing. It, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> People are showing you, they like, look, we got the white towel right here and it's trauma behind it. it it's all of this. Now it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so now we've, you know, adopted a name to it. You know, and so I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, just, you know, it's just like now, you know, would this child be set up to being traumatized because of how her mom? I think we as just in general black folks okay. are traumatized with our hair. If you look yes. at the history of black hair in Western society, yes. there have been laws made <laughs> of us not being able to wear our hair out. If you want like the, the synopsis of it, one of my favorite books of that is Hair Story by Ayanna Bird and Lori okay. Barps. Yes. I think every hairstylist should read that book. Okay. And everybody who has any kind of hair should read that book to understand why in 2010, yes, C24, black folks act the way they do about that part. Our hair. That part. And I think that does end up setting future generations 
up for trauma around yes, hair cutting. Yes, it does. Because we have these beliefs that, number one, our hair doesn't grow. Y yes. Then we believe that if we cut it, it'll always be short. <laughs> and so we don't know enough about our own hair, which is really right. sad. That's right. We don't know, know enough about our own hair that we then perpetuate the same myths that were going on in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. And now we're, we're in the 20s again. That, right, and, and we're we are. perpetuating the same uh, myths about it. And so, yes. of course, I have to follow the consent of the parent, especially if it's a child. But, right. So if it's a child. Exactly. But if it's a grown person, we're going to have a discussion. <laughs> because I'm going to take it back to understanding cosmetology, understanding right. that hair growth is under the skin, Absolutely. understanding that the body itself grows hair. If I take care of this end, if I take care of the end, that part, we can retain it. Your hair is growing. I promise it's growing. But if we take care of these ends, we can retain yes. what you're actually growing, and then you'll see it grow more. My daughter loves, she's seven, and she has very, very coily hair, high density, sandy brown. Yes. Hair. You know exactly what I'm talking that, about. I do. She never had her hair straight. But I will yes. blow her out to trim her ends, and she loves it. Because she knows my hair is going to be in good shape. That's it's right. It's going to be easier to detangle. Yes. And mommy's going to be less frustrated. I'm going to cry less. And then we're going to yes. be done. Ah, and I so love that. Yes. I would explain that likely to the parent. It's like the reason probably why your child is acting the way they are acting when they're getting their hair done is because these ends are creating an experience that's, that's right. going to traumatize them. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> no, exactly. So I love when I just tell you, which leads us to our topic, okay? Um, common misconceptions in hair care, okay? Um, why so? Okay, it, is that true? Right. You know, and so now the issue is, let's, let's go back to what you were just, and, and I love how, you. and how old is she? Uh, my daughter? She's yes. Seven. Okay, so I love the fact that at seven, you're teaching her those things. Mm -hmm. And so she's truly adopting the fact that, okay, um, one is going to be an ease, you know, she's, she's adopting the fact that, okay, I'm going to cry less and understanding that getting through this process is going to make it easier for mom and myself, yes. you know, and at the end of the day, you know, she's, she's not traumatized and she's looking for it. She's like, okay. And kind of, you know, find some things to do in the meantime of why you are servicing her, yes. which is absolutely great. Now, one of these misconceptions and i tell you is and and this is the part that just and i have to bring i have to take them straight to the word of god you know well, okay, I, 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 I do i do because i have to say okay this is how god designed the body you know he designed the hair to grow like hair does not we don't see growth does not start from the bottom it starts right there at the base and the root, root underneath the scalp so so in that cellular you know, at that point, that level is where hair growth starts. So hair is going to grow anyway. Like, like there's nothing that we, you know, that's it. it's just designed to do that. So where do we get that from? Like, okay, if I cut it, you're not seeing. Okay, mm -hmm. so my hair is just not growing at all. Uh -huh. Well, I think we got it from the fact that we had ancestral practices of hair care. Yes. Self-care, of yes. body care. And when we were brought over to this country, we, all our tools, all our methods, everything, the institutional knowledge. I know that's a very common word. But when you think about it, the cultural knowledge, the institutional knowledge, yes, sometimes was passed along, sometimes was not passed along. People right. were shipped away from their families. They were shipped to other areas. They weren't given the tools yes. or even allowed the tools to care for themselves. And so you probably didn't get a haircut. You right. didn't have your oils. You didn't have your salves. You didn't have your treatments. You didn't have your combs. Right. And so the hair probably stayed where it was. You were exposed to vermin. You were exposed yes. to uh, other body conditions, health conditions. Right. That may have stunted the hair growth or changed the way the hair grew. And so we pass this down and pass this down and pass this down. Even now, we think that, oh, I'm going to lose my hair because my grandmother lost her hair. That's I'm right. I'm going to lose my hair because my great-grandmother didn't exactly. have hair. Exactly. Not realizing your great grandmother may have been a sharecropper. That's right. Place that had yes. maybe a diet issue, maybe stress, maybe trauma, literally in the body. Yes. that was affecting the hair. It's twenty twenty four. You can go to a dermatologist, right? You can go to a black female dermatologist, right. that, who specializes particularly exactly. in your particular type of of scalp issue and body issue and yes. trauma issue. And so we can't just use the excuse that. 
this is how it's been in my family. Exactly. For what it is now. And even now we're thinking, oh, my hair doesn't grow because of maybe evidence of the things that we're doing to our hair. Right. We're not seeing growth. Exactly. And how many of us really actually know how to, the science of caring. And it's that part. For our scalps. That's right. Because our hair. That's right. Caring for our scalps. Exactly. And then the science of caring for our hair. That's right. That's right. You know what? Um, and I'm, I'm, thank you for saying that because I'm always, you know, um, communicating the fact that, you know, hair is science, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so even though there's a lot of information from now AI, you know, yeah. but prior to that, it was, you know, you, there's a lot of information online, but I mean, when it comes to the science part of hair care on a cellular level, like the information you cannot, you know, get the education and just, you know, it's like, okay, I, I know how to take care of, I, I know the fact that, you know, if I put this on my hair, because there are clients that tend to think that if I put a moisturizer, you don't have to trim my hair. Okay. Misconception number two, <laughs> you don't even have to trim my hair. Um, can't you just use a moisturizer? You know, like, do you have to trim it? And so, um, but, but I love how you went and, and from a traditional standpoint, you know, I, you know, in, in understanding that the fact that, um, and understanding that the fact that, you know, from, from going to our roots of being brought over here and not having the things that we needed, you know, um, truly, I, I can kind of see that from generation to, to mm -hmm. generation. You know, and, and so, um, and so love. So when I tell you, um, I thank you so much for, you know, shedding light on that. Um, guys, we are going to continue this conversation. Um, uh, we have a couple of other misconceptions that we wanting to, um, come and, and bring to you guys. So, so definitely stay tuned, come back and check us out. Um, so Elise. Now, for our community that wants, and you guys need to follow, okay, at least definitely, <laughs> where can they locate you? All right, at, well, you can find me on Instagram at Cut It Kinky, C U T I T K I N K Y. You can go to our website, www.cutitkinky. Uh, we are on those two heavy, not really anywhere else because we really like to focus on our professional community, and that's okay. where I tend to find. Uh, where stylists are living right. and being. We also have our own community called the Curl Society Digital. If you are interested in learning as a professional how to work with Tight Curl clients, that's where we start the journey. Okay, so definitely you want to connect. And again, my name is Morello Kane. Uh, we have um, a platform where we have events, where we um, educate, we talk hair care, all of that on the hair debate. Okay, so definitely follow us. If you're not following us on our podcast, we are on all podcast platforms. You definitely want to do so. We have events that are coming up. So definitely you want to follow. Um, and so that way you can make sure that you are there. We at our events are talking all things from nutrition to mental health, um, everything that kind of impacts hair care, you know, uh, from um, experiencing, experiencing hair loss to wanting to um, impart hair growth. And so definitely you want to continue to follow us and we thank you so much for your support here on the Hair Debate, the platform where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. Visit MoraloCane.com Follow us on all social media at The Hair Debate and at Morello Kane. Don't forget to like and share.